Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you all of the CSS units that you need to know and I'll also be comparing them against each other so you'll finally know the difference between REMs and EMs, percentages and view widths, and so on. So let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. And now to get started, I first want to look at the differences between pixel units and percentage units because this is probably the easiest thing to understand the difference between. Essentially, a pixel unit is going to be an absolute width, which is always going to be the same no matter where it's defined, and a percentage is going to be a percentage width that's actually based off of its parent size. So if we take an example over here on the right hand side, I have this red box which has a width of 50% and this red box with a width of 100 pixels. And you can see this 50% box is 50% of the size of the screen, while the 100 pixel box is 100 pixels wide. Then if we look down here inside of this black box, both of these red boxes are inside this black box. So now the 50% is 50% of this black box, while the 100 pixels is still 100 pixels wide. It hasn't changed, but the 50% has actually shrunk down to be only 50% of its parent container. And I have all the CSS and HTML over here. You can see 50% for the width of 50% and 100 pixels is our width of 100 pixels. And it's all defined on our classes for our HTML down here inside of the body. And this is pretty easy to understand. Most people can see the difference between percentage widths and pixel widths because one of them is absolute and one is relative. But something that trips up a few people is another type of relative width, which is called the view width and the view height. So let's open up the code for that over here on the side. And you can see we have 50% still being defined for this box and it still behaves both the same inside of this black box down here and the same outside in the parent section. But we have what's called view width and view height units, these VW and VH. So a view W unit, one view W equals 1% of the entire screen size on the width. So 1% of the width of my entire screen is one VW. So 100 VW would take up the entire width, and 50 VW obviously would take up half the width. But the important thing about VW versus percentages is that viewport units, these VW and VH, are based on the entire screen size, while percentages are relative to their parent. So if we look down here in this bottom section, you can see this 50 view width unit is expanding outside of its parent, because it's always going to be 50% of the entire width of the screen, and not based on the parent itself. And if we look over here in the CSS, you can see we set the width to 50 VW for these red containers that have 50 VW. And this 25 VH, we set the view height, so the height to 25 view height units. And those work exactly the same as the view width units, except for view height units, one view height unit or view H unit is going to be equal to 1% of the height of the screen. So for example, 100 view H would be our entire screen height while 25 view h in our case is going to be equal to 25% of the screen height. And it doesn't matter what you put it inside of, it's always going to be based on the entire screen size and not based on the parent. So that's the major difference between VW and VH units and the percentage units. Percentages are relative to parents, while the view w and the view h units, those are going to be relative to the entire screen size and don't care about their parent at all. Now those are some fairly simple units out of the way. But we're going to move on to probably the most confusing set of units, and that is the REM versus the EM. To get started, both REM units and EM units are relative, but instead of being relative to things around them, such as the width of their parents or the height of their parents, they're actually relative to the font size that you have defined. So an REM stands for root, that's what the R stands for, so that's relative to our root font size, while EM is not relative to the root, it's just relative to its parent. So if we look here, we have this first section which is all one level deep. See right here, we have this HTML. All of these are children of the root element. They're children of our body. So REM and EM are going to behave exactly the same because they have the same root font size and parent font size. So as you can see, one REM and one EM are the same, and same thing with two REM and two EM. But now the second section inside this black box they're inside of a parent, and that parent has a font size of 30 pixels, which is larger than the root font size. So we can see that our one REM is still the same as our one REM that's not inside the parent, but 
our 1EM is actually quite a bit larger than our 1EM up here, and that's because it's essentially 100% of the parent's font size, while 1REM is 100% of the root font size. And that'll be the font size defined on HTML, for example, and that's actually going to be based off of your browser. Almost always it's going to be 16 pixels or so, but you can change that yourself if you really want to. But for these purposes, you can see that 1REM is always going to be the same no matter where it's defined in your application. 1REM is always the same, but 1EM is going to be different because it's based on the size of its parent's font size. And our EMs can be a little bit difficult to work with because if you have a lot of EMs nested inside of each other, they'll start to grow really, really quickly because you may have one that's 2EM inside of another 2EM inside of another 2EM. So they're all going to be twice as big as the previous one and it's going to balloon very quickly, while REMs, those would all be exactly the same because they aren't based on the parent. And we can even see that our 2REM is the same as our 2REM out here, but our 2EM is essentially double the size of our parent's font, which is 30 pixels, so this right here is 60 pixels. And down below here, I have another example of using REM and EM, but it's actually for sizing these boxes off to the left, these red boxes. If we come down here, I have an icon container, which is either our root font size, or these large ones at the bottom are going to be the larger font size, as you can see down here. So the reason we're using EM versus RM is you can see this box on the left here is 1EM tall and wide. Right here you can see 1EM width, 1EM height. So it's the same size as the font, and our REM is the same size as our root font. But when we scale up our font, we also want our box to scale up. So we keep it at 1EM, and it'll scale with our font size. We don't have to change the size of our box. But down here, this 1REM, the box doesn't change because it's based on the root font size and not the parent font size. So this is one case where using EM is actually really useful for sizing things as opposed to just making your font larger or smaller. Overall, for the most part, I use REM when defining my font sizes because it makes things easier to work with. But for certain cases such as this, EMs are really useful so that you have certain things scaling with other certain things such as these red icons, for example. And now lastly, I wanna talk about percentages in the case of fonts, because you can actually use percentages with fonts, and it's going to work exactly the same as EM, because as we know, percentages are based on the parent, and EM is based on the parent, so a font size of 200% is exactly the same as a font size of 2EM. Same thing with 1EM, 100%, it's going to be exactly the same. So as you can see here, all of our REM, EM, and percentages are the same when they're at the root level, but when we get inside this parent that has a larger font size, the 2REM stays exactly the same, but our 200% and 2EM actually scale with each other. They both are 200% of the parent's font size. Now there's actually one more relative unit inside of CSS, and that's the FR unit, which stands for fractional unit, but these are only useful inside of flex containers. So for example, we have Flexbox and Grid, and that's the only places that you can use these fractional units. And I have entire videos on both Flexbox and Grid. So if you wanna learn more information about the FR unit, make sure to check out either my Flexbox tutorial or my Grid tutorial. Both of those will go in great depth on that. And that's all there is to CSS units. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.